Howdy folks, my name is Dirk Tharp and welcome to the Carolinas Concrete Cowboy. Today's episode is about slurry coats, what is a slurry coat, how to make one with readily available materials, and then how to apply one. So, let's saddle up and ride. Today, in discussing this, uh, what a slurry coat does and, and how to apply it, we start with, here's a concrete slab that I've polished. This is a typical example. Uh, in real life, it could be a terrazzo application, a concrete countertop for a kitchen, or furniture. Concrete furniture is very popular. In any of those processes, you're going to end up with voids in the surface after you start cutting and polishing the, the surface of the concrete. So let's look at some voids. What I'm discussing is these holes, they go from very tiny to actually larger holes that I can fit the pin in. All of those voids are of concern if we're gonna use this for any food preparation or I, I would deem even a piece of furniture because voids allow germs to stay in the surface. So it's very similar to the thought process it's behind a granite top kitchen. It's the same faults. We need to seal the pores before we actually seal the end product. So how do you do that? How do you get a slurry coat? Well first of all, let's look at why you can't just go buy any material and slosh it on here and let it dry and start polishing. Let's look right here on the front. Can you see these surfaces? This is a regular uh, it's a very fine material. It's made for feather edge to half an inch concrete repair. I put it on the face and you can see actually the, the larger sand granules popping out when I wipe it. That surface would block filling a lot of these holes. Those sand particles are in the way. So when we say slurry coat, we mean a coat of the fines, which, ha which are uh, absolutely Portland cement, but they also need some small sand granules um, that are very, very fine, but they help when we add water to create a paste for this slurry to stick. You have to have those sand particles to give it something to bond to and, and help fill the space. The other thing that's important in a slurry coat is you're gonna need bonding agent also. You can't just go slopping cement on here. My recommendation is no matter which way you go, Either you're going to buy a product with, with bonding agent in it, or you're going to need to add it. Okay, for the slurry coat, I chose Sackcrete Top and Bond Concrete Patcher. The name is simple. It says what it does. It is a topping that contains bonding agent. It, it means it's a powdered bonding agent already in the mix. All we do is add water. So let's look at it. First of all, Check out the new container, pretty nifty. Opens from the front, and that way we can easily store this and keep using it, because generally you don't use the whole box, you use a little bit of time. Now, when you open any repair material, you're gonna notice it's dense. What's happened is the vibration of shipment, it's just got a very fluffy powder compacted down into itself. Okay, see how that's kind of thick? So the first step you do you shut the lid before you, and this would be any repair product. And shake the container. Alright, gave it a good cowboy shake. Now look at the difference. So it's really fluffed up. So now that the material's ready, even though this seems, look how creamy that fit that seems and fluffy, right? Remember. That fluffiness still gave me this, and here you can really see the sand. So the high end of the sands is what I'm wanting to get rid of. Now I'll buff that out later, but that gives you an idea. I mean, it's stuck, that's permanent. Of Even though this looks like fluffy as makeup, it's not. We need to remove the top end of that sand. When you, we've got our materials fluffed, now we need to sift it. So you can use a, a standard flour sifter to run the materials through. But I want, I'm doing this to, to caution you on one point. I'm just gonna take a little scoop of the material, put it in the sifter. And I'm gonna make a point here. 
Okay. Now look in the sifter. We call a fraction of the larger stone. I want to caution you that that's most flowers, you're, you're going to have to look for a fine sieve is what I'm trying to say. Um, a lot of flower sifters aren't fine enough. So I did the first step through the sifter. What I've found is we really want to get a finer mesh material and run it through twice. So here's what we've sifted. We're going to run it through this strainer. I've got a little spatula to help me do it and see what remains. When we cut the camera back on, you're going to see what, how many uh, particles got kept in this sieve. Okay. okay, here's after we've sifted the material you just saw. And you can see now, as I get to the end, on my black gloves, it shows the particles that we sieved out. That's that higher end material that I told you about. So the point of the exercise is you need to sift again with something finer than that. If you don't have a lot of material like this much sand called in that scoop, odds are that mesh was too large. Okay, here's the material that we just sifted. I'm going to run it through one more time, the same strainer, in case there's some medium sand particles to remove. All right now, we've put the whole pot of material through a second time. So I just wanted to tell you that even though it went through the exact same screen, look what it caught. So don't assume you got it all, because a lot of times the next size down in the sand gradient will make it through because it's because the larger particles got blocked. So in this case, we saw we sieved it twice. Don't count the flower sift. We sifted it twice and actually removed larger and intermediate small sand particles. So for any concrete repair or, or anything you do to existing concrete, the first step is always to moisten the surface. What you're doing is bringing the surface to SSD. So every time you hear somebody give this type of a topic, they're going to keep saying SSD. What we're trying to do is get the surface saturated, but it's dry. We just want the concrete not to pull the moisture out of the material we're mixing to apply. So our first step is simply to wet it down real good. The neat thing is now that it's wet, can you see it? Uh, all those beautiful stones and all the colors that show. So there's so much you can do with uh, terrazzo finishes for concrete. Okay, now that'll the sun will evaporate some and the concrete will drink in some, but that's okay because we're wanting right under this surface to be, to be where the water ends up. I want it looking like this, not water standing on it. That's why I'm not in a rush. I'm letting this water get absorbed and then it'll be time to apply the material. All right, back over here, remember what we started with, Sac Creek Top and Bond Concrete Patcher. Here's the material after we've run it through the sieve twice. It's very fine now. So I'm just gonna add water by eye and create a batter. It's gonna be a pretty runny batter like if we're making pancakes. So, so it's runny enough to where we can apply it. A little dab will do you. Just put a little bit of water and start mixing it to make the pancake batter. I'm making a slurry coat. So now we've made a, a slurry. So slurry doesn't mean it's a thick grout, it's concrete. It's, it's a runny material, almost like a uh, grout, where I'm simply pouring it on the surface and we're taking our putty knife and working it into the surface. This is not for looks. This is to fill the void. I've chosen a flexible putty knife to do this action because it's rigid enough to take that blade and force the material into the pores. And I can always pour more if I need more holes to fill. So we've applied the material 
and then I've scraped it. Put a lot of pressure on the blade. So it's not about leaving some thick grout because the more you leave on, the more you gotta buff back off. What I'm trying to do is I've applied it, worked it in, and now I'm squeegeeing it back down using this thin putty knife blade. And as you can see, now all those little holes are filled. That's how we're gonna leave this to dry. That'll be the last step before we start polishing it. So the next time I see you, we're polishing the concrete. Where we left off, we had applied the slurry coat. But we need to back up and talk to you a minute about how to polish uh, a terrazzo service, whether it's a countertop or, uh, or, or furniture. It's the, same, it's the same technique. You're going to use a concrete wet grinder. Um, this, this, this video is not about this process, but it is involved to get this look. You're going to need one that will spray water to cool the surface, and, and these are wet polishing pads. And that's how you cut the concrete and then get it down to a smooth surface. So, in the process of the polishing, you go up to grit 400. You stop at grit 400. At 400, after I washed it and let it dry, is where we began the video when I was applying the slurry coat. When we were pointing out the voids and the pockets in the material, that was what was revealed after the process was done at 400 grit. So these are, once again, they're a wet diamond disc designed to polish. So when you apply the coat, which is the last scene we were in, you let it dry, you squeegeed it down tight, let it dry, you start back with the 400. You're going to take your way all the way through the cycle up to a 3000 grit. They, they come in a set when you buy your pads. It's not like you got to order it special. It will come in the bag. Some kits come with up to 2000. Either way, whatever the last step of polishing, there's where you stop. So this surface has been polished out all the way up to 3000. You can see it's smooth like glass. And so now let's look closely at it to see what the slurry coat gave us. In the beginning, I could do this with the pen and you'd see all these pockets and little, little holes where material was, was uh, gone. It was creating little pockets where germs could get in. You can see now it's smooth. That lets us know the slurry coat a did its job, but B, you see now why it's necessary to the polishing process. It's a good step to throw back in just to get rid of these voids. Thank you for joining me today for our lesson on slurry coats, and hopefully you picked up something you're going to be able to use. I am Dirk Tharp. This has been the Carolina's Concrete Cowboy, and until next time, yippee ki -yay Concrete. Legal disclaimer. The views expressed by the Carolina's Concrete Cowboy, although profound, and his actions, albeit masterful, are his and his alone.